welcome back to VIPs in Action, a collaboration between JMM Health Solutions and Rose, reaching our sisters everywhere, Incorporated. My name is Dr. Joanne Michelle Martin. I am a pelvic floor physical therapist here in the Atlanta metro area, and I am bringing to you several amazing individuals throughout the next several weeks who are going to be talking about their organizations, what they're doing within their um, respective communities, um, as well as future projects, um, wishes, desires within the birthing community to help us to continue to elevate um, the BIPOC community, to help us to elevate mothers in general, um, and so that moms and babies alike can get all the services and resources that they need. Now, today I have a very special guest with me, Zenobia Harris of the Arkansas Birth Project. Um, she is one of the recipients of the VIP um, cohorts grant. And she will be telling us a little bit today about Arkansas Birth Project, what they're doing, what they've been doing and other expectations. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. You're absolutely welcome. So tell us about yourself, you know, who you are, where you are, what you're doing. Tell us a little bit more about you. Well, I come from a 35 plus year history of working in public health most of my professional career. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner by training. Uh, I also have a doctorate in public health nursing and uh, administration and have provided uh, support to families uh, and communities all during that, that period that I've been active in public health. I retired a few years ago from active public health duty and have been uh, working uh, pretty much with Arkansas Birthing Project and as well as a few of my professional nursing organizations, uh, but particularly the Birthing Project, which is an affiliate of Birthing Project USA. Birthing Project USA is a 30 year plus organization that has been, that was established in Sacramento, California by a former Arkansan who had worked for the California Public Health Department uh, in their maternal and child health division and was really concerned about the amount of money they were spending on premature babies, the care for premature babies. And so she did a social experiment using some of her friends. They, they formed a circle of 10, what they call sister friends. And they provided support to 10 high-risk pregnant women, young girls in their community. And what they found astounded them. They had better outcomes. The babies were born closer to term. The moms uh, did better during the pregnancy and also afterwards. And they continued the project through the first year of life of the babies. So she decided to replicate and she did it again and again. And then the rest is history. She left her job at the public health department and uh, went full time across the country establishing birthing projects. Now there are well over 110 birthing projects around the United States and in some foreign countries. And we in Arkansas are very happy to have the, the uh, statewide project uh, because she is a, as Catherine Hall Trujillo is a founder and she is an Arkansan or did come from Arkans Arkansas. I've been working with the Birthing Project off and on for about 20 years uh, after I first heard uh, Catherine Hall Trujillo speak about the project. I became very intrigued about it, of course, with my background in maternal and child health. And so uh, we started a small birthing project uh, about 20 years ago and off and on have been sponsoring small birthing projects in Arkansas. Uh, since 2015, we've become incorporated and have begun to try to strategically approach starting birthing projects in local communities. Now, what is a birthing project? An Arkansas birthing project, basically we train community volunteers to provide social support to women, black women during their pregnancy and for the first year of life of their babies. And those women that volunteer for this can be any from any walk of life. You don't necessarily have to be a health professional. You just have to, as Mama Cat says, have good common sense and a uh, desire to serve your community. And so we, uh, we do uh, recruit uh, volunteers to uh, come in and, and learn uh, some of the, uh, the, the format of our programs, how we, how we like to administer uh, the, the support we provide. And then we recruit uh, young women in our communities who are pregnant and would like additional support during their pregnancies. I uh, had the good fortune when I first began to mentor a young woman who now is in her 40s and she, in fact, she's a grandmother now and she um, actually, her daughter is in college, the, her, her baby that was born to us. So um, I've been at this a long time and it is like when you provide that support, it's like, and we want it to be like adding another person to your family. 
add in another uh, a person who cares about you, who's concerned about your welfare and the baby's welfare, and who uh, will assist you in identifying resources that you need or that you desire, uh, will encourage you to dream about the future and plan for the future for yourself and your baby. Because what we find is many of our young women don't plan for the future. They don't have dreams for themselves. They don't have aspirations for their children. And we think that that is very important. So we think it's very important for us to take responsibility for our own community by encouraging those things uh, within the women in our community. Uh, as far as the VIPS project is concerned, uh, we did apply for a VIPS grant. And with that grant, we're contracting with a community doula network called the Ujima Maternity Network in Arkansas. And that's a combination of different doulas that work in the central Arkansas area. And because of COVID-19, it has really changed the way that we have had to uh, reach out to people. So we're trying to, we're, we're going to a virtual uh, way of operating where we actually recruit people virtually, we connect people virtually and they meet virtually because we do ask the sister friends to meet with their little sisters on a regular basis. And then um, what, what the doulas are going to do is provide some one-on-one -on -one support to women that need additional breastfeeding support because we find that many women in our communities do not breastfeed because there's no history of breastfeeding in their family or they uh, are discouraged from breastfeeding, sometimes even uh, with their pro care providers and also in the hospital settings, or they uh, give up really, really quickly if they encounter any kind of difficulty early in the breastfeeding period. So we wanna connect our women with uh, doulas who provide not only just breastfeeding support, but also any other problem support and care and extra uh, counseling during that uh, pregnancy period and postpartum period. Um, our, another thing that we're interested in doing, and this is gonna be one of our big projects this, this coming year, is to um, add a male component to our program because we believe that it's important that the fathers are more involved and also have the kinds of support they need. So we're actually in the process of forming a fatherhood support uh, board or group of men who will uh, help us to fashion that particular piece to accompany the uh, support that we provide women and their babies. I can't hear you. I think that is phenomenal. That is usually a missing component within communities, especially a lot of minority communities, is Absolutely. inclusion of the males and, and having support. Dads need support too. And especially if we're talking a first baby, you know, where, where we think, you know, well, this is new for moms, this is new territory for moms, and, and certainly they need all the support they can get. Well, so do dads. So yes. I do like that initiative. And I think yes. that that would be something that would be well received um, and hopefully could be expanded upon, not just in Arkansas, but you know, elsewhere in the country. What I do love what you said, and it's kind of almost like the gift that keeps on giving is that you know, even though you guys go on to support these young ladies, um, you essentially become a part of their family. Yes. And I feel like that is so rewarding. And I wonder how many of those who were supported ended up becoming supporters themselves and then giving back to other other people um, who may have found themselves in a situation where they were involved in a high, in, you know, they had a high risk pregnancy or they needed support or they didn't have help or, you know, a family structure unit to, to kind of, you know, guide them or, or whatnot. So I, I do think that this is very, very interesting. What types of um, struggles have you seen, if any, um, with regards to getting a program of this magnitude off the ground? Well, I, I think it was very important to me not to be connected with any uh, traditional kinds of uh, uh, programs in our communities that were operated by, I think, groups or organizations that have longstanding histories of providing um, health care, quote unquote, to our communities uh, because I didn't want to feel beholden to those organizations in terms of moving forward and meeting the needs of the women that we're serving, the families that we're serving. So it's very important. And because of that, I think it's it, there's been some restriction in terms of us getting referrals for pe from people and also the uptake in terms of people uh, understanding who we are and how we fit into the, the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. um, 
but that's okay, I think, because uh, I think to have that kind of independence is important because the program needs to reflect the needs of the people that it's serving and not necessarily the organizations that um, you know do get funding for various and sundry reasons and ways to to support uh, maternal and child health kinds of programs. So we are a grassroots program. We pretty much are volunteer operated. Um, if we continue to uh, or continue to be successful and reach out, then certainly I see us doing that by partnershiping. We do have a board of directors. And most of our board members have actually been sister friends themselves. And so they have that ex personal experience themselves and, and can better understand, I think, the needs of our clients or our, our, the people that we serve and, and support. And that, I think that's a very important component. So I think getting uh, recognition from more mainstream organizations uh, has been a challenge, but I, I wouldn't necessarily, it's necessarily deterrent to us. Mm -hmm. um, but... And, and the way that we intake people is we do it by word of mouth because we don't have a big budget to advertise and that kind of thing. So it's a slow growth, but I think it's worthwhile. Now, what, with regards to that though, what, you know, and especially dealing with younger populations, you did say this is a statewide project. How many cities throughout the state or have you noticed that this program has been adopted in? And then also what about rural areas? Because what we're finding, especially with the utilization of technology is that we don't have as much access in more rural areas. Um, with technology, given that there is infrastructure, we may be able to have increased access. So how have you found for example, like you said, utilizing the doula has been more helpful. Um, well, what we're beginning to see, because we just started this project, well, what we're beginning to see is that um, there are some um, access issues in rural communities. Uh, and, and we've been trying to focus in the Southeast Arkansas area because that's, that's where a lot of African-Americans live in rural communities in Southeast Arkansas in the Delta. Mm -hmm. And what we find is sometimes there's a connectivity issues regarding access to the internet and that kind of thing. And so I can see how we can be a bridge to help to facilitate people getting better access by actually either finding uh, resources to be able to pay for that access for people or bringing that access to them with various and sundry um, tools that we have at our disposal. Um, so that's, that's something we're beginning to get involved with and get a greater understanding about. We do have a, a, a pretty strong cohort down in uh, Southeast Arkansas um, uh, in the Lake Village area. Uh, one of our um, sister friends there is also a national trainer with Birthing Project USA. And so uh, she has done a, a really phenomenal job of, of reaching. And she's also a pediatric, she's also a women's health nurse practitioner. Um, who had worked with the health department for many years. So she actually um, accessed and worked with young women every day who were pregnant and living in those communities in Southeast Arkansas and was able to kind of see the needs from a medical perspective, but also from the social perspective. And so she's done a really incredible job of recruiting women and providing support. And then we have a few other sister friends and other communities in Southeast Arkansas. Um, there's new one we're trying to start uh, in Lee County uh, which is, uh, again, in Southeast Arkansas. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, that sister friend will be able to successfully recruit a few uh, young women also for us to uh, provide support around and provide the doula support for. That's awesome. Yeah, and I and I know with with the, you know, the advent of COVID and just uh, really trying to, I know, one day it'll be over. Um, okay. but, oh. but really just trying to to reach because, you know, it's already bad enough that we, we've got high risk moms, you know, high risk pregnancies. Yes. And then to, you know, they, they're not able to leave the homes. Maybe mm -hmm. they've got young ones. They're concerned about their health, the health and safety yes. of their young ones. Um, what other, what other things have you noticed have been helpful? So we talked about the connectivity, um, some infrastructure that, that, you know, if present could help these women have more access, what things are you finding most that moms needs? Is it, is it a particular type of support, maybe lactation, maybe just general education, um, just resources in general, what are you finding most? Well, I, I think it varies. Um, Certainly housing sometimes can be an issue, particularly uh, a, a young woman who has tried to branch out on her own and perhaps didn't all have all of her ducks in a row uh, to be able to do that. So housing has been an issue. 
I know um, our Southeast Arkansas um, sister friend has found uh, young women that she's actually had to help help make housing arrangements for because they were sleeping on people's couches and you know they didn't have a, a per, you know a place for their children or child really to sleep and that kind of thing. So I think getting bedding for for kids, babies, um, child uh, car seats, those are always things that we need to help uh, access. And then sometimes actually just connecting people with the sources of care and encouraging people to utilize those sources of care. In rural communities, that can be a challenge sometimes. I mean, people have to drive longer distances to get to care providers and then to actually get to delivery sources. And so they're, you know, they have a lot more challenges than let's say people that we see that's, that live in um, urban communities. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, so we've talked about those as being some of the struggles. What have you found to be the successes in running this program, um, in, you know, touch, being able to touch the lives of, of other young women? What have you noticed or what successes have you seen with this particular project? Well, we see a lot of, I, 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 I call it empowerment. I call it um, the fulfillment of the, the potential within uh, women that we connect with. There have been several young women that we have uh, provided support to that in turn has, has have learned how to do that for other people. And by doing so, I think they've become more grounded within themselves. And that's, that's a really gratifying thing to see and to experience and to be a part of. And that's what we're all about. That's what we should be doing. We're growing our community. We're, we're, we're growing our village. Uh, person by person. Um, and I think it creates a, a sisterhood that is uh, unlike um, many that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Any future projects that you guys, you know, given all that you've experienced this year with COVID and, you know, transition to virtual and maybe some of the things that you've seen that you've talked about before, any future projects that you think would be, um, you know, definitely beneficial as you move forward with the birth project and as you look for new ways and new initiatives to help moms? Well, I mentioned the, the fatherhood project. I think that's gonna be a good way to help, not just moms, but the babies as well, the family unit. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be a real important thing. Um, we have a need for a diaper bank in our state. And so that's something we probably are going to branch out into in terms of uh, providing that kind of support or availability for not only just women that are, we serve, but also other women in our communities that might need that kind of resource. And then of course, continue to uh, gain resources for, there's always a need for car seats. There's always a need for uh, pack and play baby beds, those kinds of material supports. And then of course, uh, from time to time, women's organizations have baby showers or uh, they, they give us resource blankets and children's clothing and that kind of thing that we can distribute when people need that. And I sometimes get calls from people who, you know, they don't necessarily want to be a part of the birthing project, but they're looking for those kind of resources. Mm -hmm. And of course, we try to help them out. We try to do what we can. So we'll continue to do those things. That's amazing. I hope you're able to. I mean, you know, you think about it's just the little things. For example, things. diapers. Diapers, yes. are they're oh. expensive. God, they're expensive. And, and, and for a lot of parents, that can be a struggle. And you think about, mm -hmm. you know, what has happened in the last year with COVID, oh you know, gosh. loss of jobs, um, some people losing their homes, you know, it's really impacted a lot of people, you know, yeah. some more severely than others. And then you think that, you know, something so simple could be all that is needed. Like, you know, and I really think that, Programs such as yours need to have more um, more presence within our, our communities. People need to be more aware of them, so that they can can kind of help, but but also spread the word. Because how many women are probably unaware that this even exists? You know, that's the other. Well, thing. I, I, that is something I think we we need to do more of, and that's something our board will be uh, trying to address in terms of how we can get better. Um, uh, visibility of what we can offer to communities. And I think we're going to have to work a lot more with our churches, with our women's church groups, uh, because we are in the Bible Belt. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a, a really great way to meet or to connect with a lot of African-American women by going through the churches. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a cohort, um, a group uh, that works through our public health department called Sisters United, which is a, it's a, a program that actually outreaches to black sororities. And they actually train sorority leaders to go out and do educational pieces about uh, safe, ch- you know, safe child care and uh, safe sleep, um, eating healthy while you're pregnant, those kinds of things. And I think if we probably do more of a connection with that group, that would be another way, I think, to probably recruit some additional sister friends in local communities and little sisters that we hadn't, um, you know, been able to reach. So those are those, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but I think if we can just make it through this COVID period, um, I, I think, I think, you know, I think we'll be, I mean, it certainly has opened my eyes to the needs that exist in our community, but also the, the resilience of our people, of mm-hmm. black people. Yeah. And um, that's a blessing. Amen to that. And I think, I think when we talk about, you know, we talk about programs such as this and we talk about programs within BIPOC communities and how we can continue to elevate these communities, how we can continue to make sure that the next generation is even better off because of simple things, care for the generation before. If we've got certain things in place um, where we can care for mothers and care for babies so that those babies grow up to be healthy and strong, they're cared for, they're nurtured and, you know, become their best selves. You know, it's amazing how you know, we, we don't, we might not necessarily look at, you know, these initiatives as such, but it's really paving the way for future generations. Absolutely. Um, and I think when we talk about really uplifting our communities, that, that the end goal, the long goal is really to, to make it better for future generations. So this, I think this is an amazing initiative. And I, I really, you know, those of you who are tuning in, um, definitely, you know, look up the Arkansas Birth Project and see what they're about. You know, do you guys have um, a platform where people can donate if they if they choose to? to, um, to yeah, you guys? on our website, yeah, if, if they can go into our website or can t- contact us on Facebook and we um, accept donations. Um, and we'll probably be doing more uh, outreach for donations too on those platforms uh, in the coming months. I haven't done a lot of donation drive thing right now. We've just been trying to kind of get through this whole change we've had to transition through with COVID mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, um, but we have we have get. In fact, I just got a contact today. Someone wanted to di- donate some um, some diapers to us and. You know, we get those kind of contacts. So, so we we will follow up. Baby clothes, mm-hmm. um, and if we don't have somebody who has an immediate need, then we donate those things to another organization who might be providing support. Because um, you know our you know our community is our community. It's 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 broad, mm-hmm. and we are our sisters keepers. Yep, yeah. yeah, we certainly are. And you know, in addition to donations, you mentioned the Facebook page. Um, what is the Facebook page? Um, is it Arkansas Facebook slash Arkansas Birth Project? Yes. Okay. Okay. And um, and what other ways can people reach out to you? Or are those the two main ways? ArkansasBirthingProject.com and like us on Facebook. And there Arkansas you go. Arkansas Birthing Project. Well, is there anything else that you want you would like to share with us regarding you know the organization, regarding um, you know what you guys um, wish to see, you know, hope for the future, your hope for twenty twenty one, a twenty twenty one without COVID, maybe. <laughs> number one, number one. <laughs> well, you know, Arkansas is known as the diamond state, and we think that we're supporting our precious diamonds. Our precious diamonds are our babies and our moms, our families. And we think that's our, um, that's our responsibility. So we take that very seriously. Yeah. Well, I, I love it. I think this is a great initiative. Um, you know, definitely here, if there are any organizations even here within Georgia that, that, you know, I know of that you could, would be a great collaboration for y'all certainly pass those along. Um, but guys, if you are listening again, go to the Arkansas birthing project.com check them out on Facebook, um, Arkansas Birthing Project, and and get to know them. I mean, this organization is doing phenomenal things. 
in helping young moms and helping moms who have high risk pregnancies that may be in need of resources, that may be in need of support, support systems, and soon, very soon, supporting dads as well. Um, so if yeah, you're not catching us at the tail end of, of this conversation, definitely go back, watch it from the beginning. Um, they're doing such amazing work within their community. They definitely could use your support. So check them out on their website and um, look to donate, whether that's financially or materially, um, look to donate to help these moms and to help this community continue to build and to continue to grow and thrive. Miss um, Harris, I thank you so much for joining joining me um, and, and sharing all that, you know, all that you guys are doing um, in Arkansas, really working, you know, within this cohort to continue to elevate people within the birthing community. Um, this is some powerful work, you know, and this is work that never stops. So, you know, yes. thank you for your efforts for sure. Well, thank you, Dr. Martin. Thank you so much for your invitation. You're absolutely welcome. Guys, stay tuned again for another episode. You know, we're doing these um, episodes of all those within the, um, the VIPS cohort, Village in um, Village Innovating Perinatal Support in Action. And so we are doing all these interviews again with all those um, recipients of the, co of the grant. Um, we will be shining a light on many other birth professionals, many other organizations that are doing phenomenal work throughout the country. So this is not just in one location, this is throughout the country. There's so much work being done you know, that many are unaware of, but it is benefiting so many individuals. So stay tuned. You're going to find us on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash JMM Health Solutions. Also, you want to go to rosebreastfeeding.org. Um, that's where you can find more information about reaching our sisters everywhere incorporated, um, who we're doing this collaboration with. So again, thank you for tuning in to VIPs in action. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Thank you.